friends, I'm Mimi. I'm a dark fantasy and horror writer. And if you've been following me for a little bit, things haven't been going so well. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity to talk about, you know, the shadow that follows us everywhere. Imposter syndrome. Yikes. This particular one hits me incredibly hard and it's something that I have to be mindful of since it can make me really feel destroyed. And some parts of me feel like I shouldn't even create this video in the first place. Go figure. Just a disclaimer before we go on. I am not a mental health professional. I am a longtime mental health patient. I've been through several therapists, years of misdiagnoses, tried all these types of different medications. I've heard it all. So while I can't speak to your specific disorder that is impacting your thinking, I'm hoping that my experiences with depression, with anxiety, and with worse than any of those will help anybody feel heard. So let's get to business. What is imposter syndrome? A lot of interpretations define it as the feeling that you're unworthy or undeserved of your successes or accomplishments or any praise given. It's the feeling that you are not who you say you are, but you're a fraud. It's the fear that if they see the real you, then they will see that you don't deserve these accomplishments. I actually have a little tiff with this definition. I personally don't believe that it comes with only perceived success. I think it can certainly come about when you're not achieving success, when you're convinced that your lack of success is proof that you're a fraud, and when you feel like you can't compete with other people. It can come when you're trying something new and you feel unqualified. You're a fraud from day one. How dare you think you can write a book, let alone convince people that they should buy it. You're not a real writer, etc, etc. Where does it come from? Anywhere really. Somebody told us we weren't good enough at something. Your art teacher painted over your work in order to fix it. Your mom when she said your B's weren't your A's. Someone told you you didn't belong here. Because in the field we're in, it's so heavily based on critique. We are constantly being critiqued. You are targeted by your own career path. Congratulations. It could even be a defense mechanism. That's right. You're not comfortable with hyping yourself up. So your imposter syndrome is a method to keep you grounded in case the avalanche falls. Here's the problem. It will not go away with any form of success because then you wonder why the fuck you're being applauded and it still haunts some of the biggest writers out there here's what maya angelo said yes the maya angelo she said i have written 11 books but each time i think uh oh they're gonna find out now i run a game on everybody and they're gonna find me out neil gaiman almost echoes her words exactly he says i was convinced that there would be a knock on the door and a man with a clipboard would be there to tell me it was all over that they've cut up with me and that I would now have to go and get a real job. Personally, my fight with imposter syndrome is almost always a losing one. I'm always haunted by questions about whether I'm good enough to handle anything. The easy way out is to just quit, but I never take the easy way out. And while I was like researching methods to fight imposter syndrome for this video, I've picked on a few that have helped me personally get out of that headspace, at least temporarily. The first thing, trust. The Latin roots for the word confidence means to trust. Acting with trust sounds exactly like what it means. It means to take a leap of faith. So if you are willing to take steps towards your goals, you are doing so with the uncertainty of where you're gonna end up. You have to do so with courage, with competence, with self-compassion. That's the real meaning of confidence. You know what they say about writing, trust the process. Number two, stay connected to your work. I've tooted this horn before, but don't compare yourself to your peers and instead really nurture your admiration for them. The people you admire started somewhere. It's hard to believe, but it's true. They're talented because they've worked hard and they've worked hard because they are passionate. If you're feeling like an imposter, it means you care so deeply about your work and that passion should be your driving force. I don't think it's possible for someone to suck that poorly with something that they're that involved in. That passion should come with the effort and the drive to improve. Therefore, you, you can't suck. I'm not saying that your writing does not need work. All writing needs work and all writing needs beta readers and all writing needs editing. But I'm saying it's possible that you you are already on a good path with your work and you belong with your work. You are not living a lie. You are not pretending to be someone you're not. Number three, our frame of mind, especially when we're comparing ourselves to other people, can warp our perception. And imposter syndrome can be really be just that, a falsehood. You may put your peers on a pedestal, but understand that you are just as qualified and as capable as the people you admire. Always keep in mind that harnessing creativity and being a writer is incredibly difficult. It's easy to feel small when you're looking at someone else's work because it seems so original and creative to you. But that's because you are so close to your own work that you stop feeling like a creative force. You are creative and you are capable. You just don't see it yet. Number four, feel the imposter syndrome and do it anyway. In other words, just ignore it. This was a method that helped me in all sorts of ways, especially in the beginning of my healing journey. I'd read about this method once in an article in Psychology Today, years and years ago. I can't remember what it talked about, 
and I don't remember what the article was titled, but the one thing that struck me was from this particular psychologist who believed that people who have such an excruciating time with self-help books, with affirmations like myself, will have little success in trying to fix their broken self-esteem. Many of the methods, especially in cognitive behavioral therapy, seem to be difficult to adapt for people like me. For these kind of people, the psychologist suggested to ignore the low self-esteem and just do act anyway. It sounds really pessimistic, but it really liberated me. And I found myself accomplishing things by actively ignoring my own voice, by hiding away my bad thoughts instead of trying to spend time rewiring the bad thoughts. Like for me, positive affirmations took me years to adapt to. I finally figured out what this method is called and it's called acceptance and commitment therapy or ACT. It's a controversial form of therapy to be sure, because it sounds like you're just succumbing to your negative thought patterns, which is a bad faith interpretation in my opinion. It's not about feeling helpless under your negative thoughts. It's about acknowledging those feelings, accepting that they are an ingrained part of your behavioral makeup, and then committing to your goals and your dreams anyway. It's a form of building resilience against the negative patterns. If you think about it, imposter syndrome is so indicative of a lack of confidence. My particular mental health disorder really impacts this. I, I have a lack of self-esteem. But a quote that I think really fits well with the situation comes from the wonderful Carrie Fisher. She says, stay afraid, but do it anyway. What's important is the action. You don't have to wait to be confident, just do it and eventually the confidence will follow. Number five, remember that you still have something to offer. The time you've already put into your work matters even if you don't think it does. It means you are learning and are still learning. If you're a total beginner, get started on the learning. Eventually you will have two years of experience. Don't worry about the other writer who seems better than you. They may have just more time and experience. They don't invalidate you and it doesn't make your perspective or your work worthless. That's like saying a therapist with two years of experience is not helping her patients as well as the one with 10 years. Number six, stay hopeful. Remember what I mentioned before about building trust and taking leaps of faith. Hope is a driver for human potential. It's about reconnecting with your inner child and the joy that you mind from embarking on your writing journey. Hope keeps us focused on where we want to go and the accomplishments we want to have. Hope allows us to see better opportunities coming our way and hope allows you to stay connected and authentic to your own writing. Number seven, Remember, you are not pretending to make art. That's not even possible. If you are making art, you are making art. You cannot pretend to be writing if you're writing a book. You are literally doing exactly what you set out to do. So don't lie to yourself. Number eight, talent is an illusion. Even the greatest of minds needed practice. Those child geniuses, they practiced. The common thought is that talent means that it came easily to the artists we admire, which is not necessarily true. Sure, some things come easier to some than others, but all artists at some point have broken down and wondered if they were up to the task. Victoria Schwab the Invisible Life of Addie LaRue took her nine years to write. Nine years. It did not come easily to her. Remember that it takes what it takes. Building talent, or in other words, building the ability for things to come easier to you, takes consistent practice and consistent work. And it takes learning new skills to improve the work. And learning from your work, you need to make mistakes so you can learn from them. And number nine, there's no such thing as magical qualities. It's easy to think that your favorite writers churned out work that was exactly how they imagined them. I'm a pantser, that's not even possible for me. So it's not true. Do not fall into the trap of thinking that you do not possess something special. They do not possess magic, but they don't lack it either. And the truth is, neither do you. Like I said, I can really get gripped by imposter syndrome myself. You could see that from the other video I just posted. It's one of those things that can really stop me from writing for months at a time, and it takes a while for me to recuperate. But hopefully you'll find something that'll help you here. To close this video, I wanted to read a quote from a craft book I love, Story Genius by Lisa Cron, that I feel is really helpful when you are paralyzed by your own writing. She said, reading a novel is linear, but writing one is not. And that, my friends, is the end of that. If you got questions, if you got requests, drop them down in the comments below. A little like button goes a long way for me since I'm so small. You can also follow me on social media. I'm at Marav Levy Writes everywhere. You find all my links below. Now I want to hear your perspective. What do you tell yourself to help your imposter syndrome? And do you have a really hard time with it? All right, I'll see you next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.